Hey everybody, welcome back in the shed. I'm Troy Shaw. We're back home again in the shed after being on location last week at Cinema. And with me again is Dave Griffiths. How's it going, Dave? It's great. How's it going? Couldn't be any better. Couldn't be any better. Non-stop around here, so. <laughs> <laughs> Troy's been busy. He's a new dad, by the way, and uh, he had a long honeydew list today, so <laughs> didn't know if he was going to get here on time, but he pulled out the stops and made it. I made it. So our guest today is bass player extraordinaire. He's bass player for Mojo Assassins at this time, but he's played in many bands over the years. Uh, part-time lead vocalist for Mojo Assassins, you know, trades off with David Zajcek. You know, we had him, him on the first couple episodes. So uh, let's introduce Mr. Tony Calhoun. How's it going, Tony? Hey, man, how are you doing today? It's going great. It's going great. Well, let's get started. Uh, so what got you into music and specifically bass guitar? That's a very long story. <laughs> I, I uh, you know, my mother got me into playing, singing gospel and stuff in, in church when I was very young, four or five years old. But um, as far as, and then I, I went from singing gospel to playing classical piano. I didn't know at the time that my mother would wanted a, an accompanist. You know, my mother's a great singer. She, she was, you know, everywhere we went, she was the choir director, you know. But, cool. She never told me that. I learned classical piano from, you know, in Germany with a, with a Frau Heigl, and uh, she was very strict, very, you know, regimented. And anyway, I, I, I played piano, and, and after about two or three years, I saw the Beatles. I saw Elvis Presley on, you know, on the movies and things like that. And I told my mother, I said, you know, hey, you know, uh, last last summer I learned how to play guitar. I thought I was a guitar player, then, you know. I learned how to play guitar with uh, Buddy McCoy Jr., but he took it back. You know, he said he, I could have it, but he took it back when I started being, you know, being able to play it. You know, so she she said, "Well, I'll get you a guitar." She ordered me a a, uh, a guitar out of a Sears catalog. Like and with silver tone or yes, one of those. But when it, no, it was an, it was it was an acoustic. Okay. When it got when it got to Germany, it, the neck was broken, so I never got a chance to play it. I went from there to. I played drums and sang in, in, in little groups and, and stuff when I was in Europe and um, you know it was, a, it was a, a rarity you know this this black kid with this with all of this hair and this big voice playing playing rare earth and stuff you know <laughs> and you know everybody was thinking, man this you know this this is very so I went from playing drums to when we came back to America my father got stationed in Fort Hood for about two or three years and and um, I told him, I said, you know, Dad, I, I really want to, I really want a guitar, you know. Well, my father went to the pawn shop. You know, there's five boys in my family, and my father hadn't quite made the, his his big rank and stuff, so he wasn't didn't have a whole lot of money. He goes to the pawn shop and gets the cheapest guitar and amplifier that's there, and it was a Tiesco Del Rey bass. That's the second time we've talked about the Tiesco Del Rey on this really? show. Yeah, really? Jeremy Lynn Woodall. That was his first really? axe. Was a, I hated Jessica my Del. father. <laughs> yes. I hated him. I said, man, what the hell is this? Is it's a guitar? You asked for a guitar. When you asked for a trumpet, I bought your damn trumpet. It's in there in your damn roar. You know, okay, all right. So he said, you learn how to play that one. Maybe I'll buy you another one. Well, he never bought me another one. But I, I learned it. I came here to visit my grandmother again. Okay. And the same boy, um, Buddy McCoy Jr., those guys, him and my cousins, had formed a band. They didn't have a bass player. So about two or three weeks after I got my bass, they were going like, we need, we've got a gig, and you're going to play it. And so I, 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 I didn't even know how to tune it. Ty, Tyrone Davis had a song out at the time called Turn Back the Hands of Time, and I tuned my bass to it. The low string on a bass is an E, and t and turn back the hands of time was in C, so you can imagine what my bass sounded. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> are, are you a native Texan? I was born in Texas. But are you an army brat? I'm an army brat. Yes. Okay. Okay. So that's how you ended up in Germany. What what age were you when you went to Germany? Oh, uh, see, I went back and forth to Germany. Um, I I must have been about four or five years old the first time I went. And we, um, you know, that's why I started. I studied classical piano up until the time that I was eight, 
with Frau Blucher or what? Was Frau it? Heigl. Frau Heigl. Yes, Heigl. Just making a little joke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if she was here, she would slap you. <laughs> if I did, you will practice and you will like it. <laughs> You know, she'd come and did you did you practice? You practiced two hours yesterday? If I if I I just look at her, she knew I was I, I didn't and she'd wrap me on my hand with that ruler that she had yes. at first, you know. It's like a blues brothers episode. <laughs> yeah, well one day I hit her back. <laughs> well, we don't want a pending litigation, Mike. <laughs> well, I didn't hit her hard. <laughs> so you uh came back to the States, it sounds like you did a little running around back and forth. Right. Um, I heard you spent some time in Milwaukee. Uh, yeah, I, I, was, I was. I had lived in Milwaukee four years before I moved to Waco. Okay. Uh, is there any other stories in the time between Germany and Milwaukee as uh, oh, Alice Oh, man, Cooper there's a say? lot of there's a lot of time be between there. I, I, if, I, if I was going to go backwards, I, I lived in Milwaukee. I met Parliament Funkadelic. I met Dr. Watson. Uh, I met the White Brothers. I met um, um, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Uh, no, that was after I met, met. I met Earth, Wind, and Fire up in Tacoma, Washington, back when I lived there. Before I moved to Milwaukee, I lived in Tacoma, Washington. No kidding. Tell us about that. Well, I, I, those guys up there are bona fide musicians. Okay, everybody there plays jazz. So I I learned a lot of jazz that I know up in in, in, in Tacoma, Washington. The club, place called the Rail Club. It, it's still there every Sunday. All the bad, the, the really bad guys that that are in Washington State go to the Rail Club. You know, you, if you if you go there and hang out on a Sunday, eventually you're gonna see everybody that comes through there, that, through the state, not just the town of Tacoma. Really? Yes. There's some. I'm, I I used to go there and, and I wouldn't even play. I just set my bass down by my chair and watch these guys go, man. And and my piano player who played trumpet at the same time, he was he's a child prodigy, um, Millard Jackson. He from from New York. He was a child prodigy. and We were in the army together. Okay, and he'd take me down there and I, he'd go. He'd go tell everybody and and the, and the guys was whisper in the corner and said, oh, and they come and hey, man take your bass out. And I take it out. You, you want to see it? No. You gonna play it? <laughs> so every Sunday I'd go in there and get my butt kicked. Oh really? I mean, uh, you know, I could I'd leave with my butt on my shoulders. It hurt <laughs> <laughs> because they right in the middle of the song they go solo, and I'd play so low you couldn't hear me. <laughs> I'm serious, man. Maybe there's a guy at the mixer board. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I I I had a reputation of you know thumping. Mm -hmm. um, was this, uh, who were you um, drawn from at that point? Was this uh, as far as you were doing any slap bass or anything? Yeah, like yeah. That? That's, that's, you know, I, I listened to, you know, I, I met Larry Graham yeah. in Graham Central Station when I was in Germany. Before I lived in Tacoma, I lived in Berlin. Okay? I, I was the music director for the Bicentennial Showcase Band. This is when I was in the Army. Okay? And um, so you played in the Army. It wasn't. It wasn't my. I kind of created a job. Okay, cool. In the army, you know, I started out as as an infantryman, and then I went to you know down in Fort Benning, Georgia, Ranger School, and all of that type of thing. And um, <clears throat> when I left Fort Benning, Georgia, you know, it's it's like they say join join the army and see the world. Well, they sent me back to Germany. Damn it. But when I went back, I, I was in the service at, at that time, and um, I, I, I got chosen by the, 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 the commander, of the General Davis, I think it was his name. He was, he was the USAC commander, and he got me to, out of my unit to you know, put a, a showcase bandit. The guy at the service club said, man, you need to hear this guy. You know, and he said, okay, I've got an idea. You know, we're going to get him to... To uh, put a band together, so we put a bicentennial showcase band, and all of, all of the talent. So this was seventy six. Seventy six. Yes. Okay. Uh, we we hosted the Oktoberfest, first American band to host the Oktoberfest. We uh, we played at the Four Power Picnic in Potsdam. I, I guarded Rudolph Hess at the same time. <laughs> no <laughs> kidding. Yeah, yeah. Um, went from 
And I, we, we, we went when we weren't playing for the military, we were all over Germany playing. My, my, I had the bicentennial showcase band with the army, and then when we were off base, we were called Music Box. Well, it's got to be you know moving sand piles and stuff like that. <laughs> More or less, <laughs> moving those big beer steins. <laughs> we drank a lot of beer in Berlin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Didn't weigh but 140 pounds. <laughs> but after I left Berlin, I went to I went to Tacoma, and that's when I met Jackson. And uh, were you still in the army at that time? Or yes, you, yeah. Okay. And I, I, I put a band together called Friends and Strangers. Ronnie Laws. He had, when I moved there, Ron, a guy named Ronnie Laws. He had a, a he's a well known sax player, jazz sax player. He had a he had a group he had a, ba- a song called Friends and Strangers. Okay, so I named the band that. Ronnie Laws comes through town and says, "Hey, why don't you guys back me up?" Okay. When he leaves town, um, Grover Washington Jr. comes through there. Hey, why don't you guys back me up? You know, when he, when they leave, when he leaves. Um, it, uh, what was his name? Uh, God, dog. There's a whole lot of people. But we we started opening shows for like James Brown when he came there for to to do his. He was 51 years old. He made you know. We opened for. Uh, I played with Ray Charles when he came there. Wow. Um, uh, played, went, played with or opened for? Well, I, I played with Ray Charles. Okay. I didn't. I didn't play that long. <laughs> <laughs> But you were getting better. On I was, I was getting point. better then. I'd, I'd been going to that rail club and getting my butt kicked. Yeah, you know, and I, I and, and I can read, you know, so it it wasn't that bad, you know. The uh, thing of it is that so they give you the sheets and then you I take them and rewrite them. Yeah, okay. I take them and rewrite them because I learned all I learned was the treble clef. Okay. When I was playing classical piano in Germany, I learned we I was playing four handed pieces. There was a German boy over here playing on one piano and me playing the treble clef on this. So I learned all, all I learned was the treble clef. When you needed to really know that bass clef. Yeah, I, I didn't play bass at that time. Oh, I got you. See. So, and then I learned trumpet. You know, I came back, when I came back to Texas to visit my grandmother, okay, everybody was in school. <laughs> so, I, went, I learned trumpet from a guy named Mr. Lee at Carver High School. Okay, you went to Carver? I went there for a little while. Then, and that was there that year that they changed and went to La Vega, and they had all of this racial stuff going on. And and uh, I went back to Germany fast. <laughs> yeah, it was probably a good time. I didn't know what was the hell, you know. I, I didn't understand it, it, none of it, you know, honestly. And uh, when you know when I, my German friends, when when all of the racial stuff was happening here in America, all my German friends were going like, "What's the matter? You're all Americans, aren't you?" What are you guys fighting for? You're Americans. You're a great country. You know, I'd, I'd go like, I don't know. I've been with you all this time. <laughs> you know. Well, they had a they had a good point. Yeah. Now to today, I still have that in my head. You know, I go like, what are you guys fighting about? Well, you know, you're a black guy, and I go like, wait a minute. Why are you bringing that up? You know what I mean? If you don't want race to be an issue. Why are you bringing it up? <laughs> you know, so I, I, when I came, it was kind of a lot of there was a lot of culture shock when I came back to America. Okay, now when I when I lo- when I left Tacoma, I went to Milwaukee. I, I was uh, the music director for for um, Tyrone Davis. He has a, he has a, a top hat lounge in in Milwaukee. Uh, for about eight or nine months, I, I was that, and and, and we and I was I got in a band called Syndrome, you know we were sponsored by the American Hockey Association. When what they, year was that? That was that it must have been seventy nine. That's funny. My parents moved up there in seventy nine. They lived in Waukesha. Waukesha. And uh, they lived there for a few years when I was in college. And uh, I broke down in Waukesha. Did he? <laughs> I went to that. I went to Milwaukee more than once. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I had a blast. Yeah, it's a Went to place. Summerfest. Right. And uh, just, you know, which is one of the original large festivals. I, I, played, like I New, played Summerfest. No kidding. With, with uh, Lee Rittenauer. Oh, wow. Um, who else was that? Uh, Jeff Beck. <laughs> Did a little Jeff Beck backing for... A very short time, you know. The summer fest, they come and, and if they're hiring a musician, everything there is union. You know, you yeah. pay your your two hundred, one hundred eighty five dollars. 
and you and you get these little forty five dollar an hour gigs, you know, and you're only gonna play an hour. <laughs> so, but at Summerfest, you know, they pay you good. I paid. I played the the uh, the jazz blues fest at at Paps Theater in, yeah. in Milwaukee. Um, every the first Monday of every month, I was I was singing jazz at the Jewish voca- Jewish Vocational Center Center, which was pretty nice. Nice. I didn't have to play, you know, and. Uh, but let me regress just a little bit. When I was in Georgia, in Fort Benning, I met the, the guys from the Bar Kays. Okay, really? yeah, Larry and those guys. And we used to sleep on the floor. You know, we go do a gig and 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 then come and sleep, you know, Larry and those guys would be at the polka dot inn and we and we'd be over here at the Red Door. You know, and then and, and we'd all get together afterwards and drink and and, and make sandwiches and things like that. But Larry was. He was into that grog, man. <laughs> he, 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 everybody be eating and he be drinking, you know. Y'all come stay at my house, so, you know. And the, and the bar case were doing real, starting to do real good then. I met the guys from Heat Wave. Um, who is that? Uh, James Brown. I met James. My 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 uh, ex mother in law knew James Brown. She was from Augusta, Georgia, and. Uh, she kept she kept trying to see I'm going to get you a good job I'm going to get you a good gig so she kept trying to call James Brown and James Brown said I don't know that damn woman you know but I guess it was, one time <laughs> he got my band to open for him you know and he, Man, and he that's, liked us you that's know. good yeah he, that's he, an accomplishment yeah, you mean somebody like Bootsy running around playing bass though you know you go like woo right. woo you know, you know. Yeah, I just saw Bootsy um, a few months back. Where? Where? Uh, Leaf Festival in Asheville, North Carolina. He uh, played there. You know, uh, I saw him with James Brown, and then I saw him in Germany mm-hmm. when when he was just starting to put his own show together. You know, and, and he's got quite a band now. He's got a f- orchestra now. I mean, they play for. 15 minutes before you ever see Bootsy and then yeah, he comes yeah. out and he just you know he's he's got a pretty good thing going on right see, now see let me tell you how how things are. see the guys here don't do it but in the professional world of music the band comes on before the star right you play anywhere from 15 minutes to 45 minutes mm-hmm. okay and then you introduce the star. Okay. Yeah. Percy Sledge, when he came to Brazos Knots, he did the same thing. That's the band what, came out and they played for about it's, 15 it's minutes standard. or so. It's yeah. standard. And if you're, if you're James Brown, you got a guy that's carrying the cape. But, hey, he had he had a guy that he was paying just to say, here's James Brown. Right. <laughs> I mean, and he was uh, uh, all over the world with him, and that's all he did. Well, see, I, I eliminated the MC job. Because of my voice, a lot of guy, a lot of people would hire me. I play bass, you know. A lot of the guys don't want you to sing. Don't you sing? You just you guys play twenty minutes of music and then you introduce me. So, because and ladies and gentlemen, you know, here's Tyrone Davis, you know, or here's Code Blue. I played with with Code Blue up in Chicago. But uh, I, I've had the the stars of show shows come out and tell me. I told you not to sing. Well, you took too long. <laughs> you know. Yeah, they don't want you to make them look bad, I guess. They don't want you to sing. Yeah. Anyway, I make you go for your guns. That's that's one thing. And back when I could really sing, you know. You're not I, too shabby anyways. <laughs> I, I'm better at it now. I, I, I know more technique mm. than all of this. Ah, you know, because I could do all of that kind of stuff, you know. Right. Yeah, I, I I I would I could sing in my band. I would sing Smokey Robinson, you know, uh, t- Brenda Brenda and the Tabulations. I'd sing the female part, you know, and then everybody in the in the band sang. This is the first place that I've been where it's only like one or two people that, in the band that sings. You know, all the, all the bands up, up north and have, around the, the south. You know, the uh, the whole band sings. You know. So Waco is kind of your home now. How long have you been in Waco playing in different bands? I've been here uh, since 83, I think. 83 or 84 I came here. And you played with Joe Silva for a while. Yeah, I was I was with Joe Silva the night before he died. 
Wow. You know, we yeah. we played at Mambo's at, in uh, Fort Worth. Mm. Um, I was with I was with Sherman Evans up until the time that he died. You know, and that's what we we ran Sherman's show like the, like the old professional shows. The band would, the and band would come up and we'd sing and or, or play, and then, you know we do. Sherman wasn't afraid of you. Sherman didn't have to be afraid of you singing. You know what I mean? So he would sing something, boy. You know, well, so I'd get up there and sing. And and but we did a lot of music, and then I'd MC, ladies and gentlemen, Sherman Evans. You know, I, I like him singing. It was. <laughs> um. Yeah, it was sad to lose Joe. I mean, um, yeah, it was sad, sad for me to lose both of them. Yeah, you know, so yeah. Sherman used to come and hide out at my house when I had a, had a house in Mark. You know, he'd come out and hide out at my house, and we sit there and cook ribs and, and talk, and he could rest. You know. <laughs> yeah, he uh, yeah he had fought cancer for quite some time, and he you know I'd I'd seen him. I I used to see him back when I lived in DFW when um, he was with the Chinchillas. Uh -huh. Remember them? Uh huh. And um, he was he was great. Right, they were a great band. When I played with him, when when I, before when did, when did you play with him? I, I'm not exactly sure. When J, it was Jaybird and I that that played with him, and we had a dynamite little trio. Mm -hmm. You know, all three of us sang. Mm -hmm. You know, and and you know, um, in fact, it's my fault that Joe Silva started singing. <laughs> It, I'm sorry, everyone. Would you get a sore throat one night? No, I told, I told, uh, you know, I told, you know, Joe was trying to sing at the time, but he, 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 I told him, I said, man, listen, I went in ho to his motel room one time, and I said, listen, man, you can sing, but you need to stop listening to yourself, okay? When I, I, I the Pips, Gladys Knight and the Pips, Gladys Knight had all of these mega hits at first, you know, and then all of a sudden for two years, she, you, she, everything she put out stunk. The reason being is is because she started listening to herself, you know. And Bubba, her her um, cousin, I told him I said her brother, I said, man, listen, you you know what? The reason that she sounds like that is because she's all she does is listen to herself. She's holding the notes so she can hear herself, you know. Right. And Joe would do that, and so I, I man, listen, singing is is it's. It's music too, okay. You can't just hold it past the the. It's it's a half note that you're singing. It isn't. It isn't. Uh, it's a half note. It's a half note. Stop. Right. Stop here. Hit the note. Stop. Hit the note. Stop. Slide into the note. Stop. You know, it's, it isn't. It isn't about. Oh, no, 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 you know, you know, like a little chihuahua. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know Joe, Joe, Joe. You know, he, he used to look at me and say. Man, you're you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but he listened to me, you know. Joe, I, he he started to sing real good. So currently, you're playing with Mojo Assassins, David mm -hmm. Zajac, and you got Ronnie on drums, and you guys are you know playing a wide variety of music. So you got some rock and some blues and some and uh, some funk and all kinds of stuff. So why don't you play a little bit of something what you guys are playing these days? Give, give us some funk, man. <laughs>
from playing at home alone. <laughs> That's too much trash. <laughs> it's not bad. It's not bad. You know. Hey, we're in the shed. Yeah, I'm in the shed, man. Just Shredding. looking around at all the trash in my shed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm adding to that. <laughs> hey, Tony. You know, you post a lot of great music on Facebook. You obviously, you know, have a pretty huge palette of bands that turned you on. Um, yeah. Any stuff out there that has you excited right now or anything you want to talk about in the past? I like Bruno Mars. Yeah. Yeah, I love I'm, 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 I'm crazy about Bruno Mars. You know, he's he's bringing the funk back, man. No doubt. He's, right. he's, he's got the band. And if you look, there's, there's, a, there's a band called LTD in the, in the day, back in the day. Bruno Mars, the outfits for his band match those, even the color. The so. same amount of people, the... Um, the uh, the stage show is it's all LTD, okay. Now he's got a little James Brown in there. Everybody has to have some James Brown, exactly. You know, but he's about the only one that excites me now. Yeah, you know, it, it, I think he excites everyone that sees him. I mean, you can't really not like this guy. He, you, you can tell that he he that he grew up seeing the bands that I was playing in. You know what I mean? Exactly. He grew up. He grew. He grew up seeing bands like Lakeside. I played with Lake Lakeside. Play, played here, and the place was packed. Nobody remembers it. They don't even know who Lakeside is. Must have been a pretty flowing bar that night. Then I guess it was at the convention center. Oh, really? They played. They, they played here two two years ago, out at uh, at um, Juneteenth Day, out at, at at Cameron Park. We opened the show for them. That's when I was with the 104.9 band here in Waco. We used to open for Roger with with um, the upstage band that I was with here in Waco. See, badass bands. But they played pre predominantly what was on the black uh, charts at the time, you know. And we would go out and kick Roger's butt. I'm talking about kick his butt. He, he, can't, he, he would come out and say, get them off of the stage. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be shown up. We kick Rogers' ass. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> He'd come out in his robe. Get them off the stage. <laughs> in Copper's Cove, in Copper's Cove, I went back on stage, and then the band came up behind me, and that's when we—that was our last gig with him. <laughs> we kicked his butt. <laughs> Speaking of kicking butt, I mean, you and the Mojo, Sa Mojo Assassins are really kicking butt these days, man. Y'all got a great sound, got all kinds of cool original songs. Uh, when David was in here a couple of weeks ago, he talked about you guys going back in the studio and right. recording another CD. I mean, yeah. is that in the works? And how'd you get involved with, with David and them for the Mojo Assassins? How'd that come about? Did he, David didn't tell you? One night, I was, I was practicing with the 104.9 band. I left there. And I stopped in over at uh, what's the club now? It was called Rumors now. CNR. It was CNR. CNR. I, I stopped over there. They had a little thing going on for Willie Nelson. Okay, and uh, I went in there, and, and uh, you know, I told Dave, Big Dave Griffin that I was going to come over there. Well, I go in there, and, and David David Zychek and Ronnie are are standing there, and then and uh, they're getting ready to go on stage, and. Then, and, I, and when the guy announced them, they they went on stage, and I I, I, I said, man, they, David, you don't you guys don't have a bass player. He said, that's right. I said, give me five minutes, you know. And David said, usually Tony doesn't come back in five minutes, but I ran out. My my bass was in my car, so <laughs> I you had to go to the park. I line. couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't get lost this time. Did, what? Why did they have a bass player? I don't know why they didn't have a bass player. It was just him and, and him and Ronnie. Ronnie. And they were I, they were going to try to do it anyway. You know, yeah. that's that's one thing that's good about. I think that's I like the hearts on Ronnie and David. You know, I call David a little pit, pit bull, and 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 Ronnie is a mastiff. You know, <laughs> yeah, they're just they're just two guys that they, they don't they don't quit. They don't they're not give they don't give up. You know, and I don't I'm not around. I don't like being around quitters. That's right. You know, I'll quit you. But I won't quit because of uh, 
the fact that there's nothing but me and a, a drummer or just me you know I won't quit the gig I'll quit BS you know yeah. there's been a lot of guys that try to get me to play and I'll go like no so you went out to the car got your axe came back in no. and yeah and, and then after that uh, that uh, right after that that same night David says hey Tony you, uh, we don't we don't have a bass player right now will you, will you play with us I said sure I've been wanting to play with you ever since I've been in Waco you know what I mean it's just we never could get together but that's where we went from there so y'all played some gigs and then decided to go into the studio and record some songs. I guess did you write half the songs and David write half the songs? Yes. Right, right. Yeah. I, I wrote half and David wrote half. You know, some of the songs I wrote in like ten minutes. You know, uh, and and having somebody like David and Ronnie, all I have to do is say, well, here, this is what I have. You know, and and, and it's and it's there. Yeah. You know, the the first the first night that we recorded, that's the, the CD was done. The first night, you know. Yeah, all that other stuff that was added to it later, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, when I was with the blues guys, you know, I met B.B. King up in, in Cranbrook, Canada. And, then, and you know, uh, Buddy Guy in Chicago, we played at his club. And he, he has an apartment upstairs, and he came down. When he came down... At the uh, Legends. The Legends Club. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You been there? Yeah, I met Buddy Guy behind a bar that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, yeah, you were telling me about yeah, that. I went, yeah, I went... I was in Chicago on a business trip. Was he wearing coveralls? No, he wasn't. Okay. But um, I, was, I was with a guy who uh, wanted to hear good music in Chicago. And yeah. I was up there for a convention or something. And, and I, so I took him to Kingston Mines first, all right? Right, so that's over, the place, man. Yeah, he went to Kingston Mines, and, and we saw some killer bands. And then I said, there's another place I've been wanting to go, and I haven't been there. I said, right. So we jumped in the cab. It was winter time, so we got a cab, drove to... Legends and uh, and you know there's 30 people in the bar that night and the bands you know they got them stacked up right and and they're all great I every mean, band that goes every in band there. that goes over. and I look over and the bartender's over there and he's talking to Buddy I'm like I gotta get a beer I gotta get to talk to this guy <laughs> <laughs> I think he saw me coming and he goes ah oh, here comes another white boy <laughs> <laughs> but anyways I ordered a beer another white boy that thinks he can play guitar yeah well I, I didn't mention guitar but I just said <laughs> Hey, buddy, you know, nice to meet you. And got my bar. I didn't try to engage him too much, but he was cool. Yeah, he's and, very uh, cool person. That's a, it's a great club. Yeah, and my name is written on the wall there. Is it? Mm-hmm. Next time we're hanging out, I'm hanging out with Buddy up at his place. I'll, well, you, you, I'll yeah. drop your name. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I get a free beer. He called me Billy D. <laughs> oh, did he? Yeah, because, I, you know, I was there with, you know, the way I was dressed. You know, Billy, Billy D. Williams was on Ladies yeah, yeah, Blues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I was always... I always dress, man. You look good now. I'm okay, but I used to always wear a tie and a jacket, you know, yeah. everywhere I went. You know. So, do you have any new songs for the uh, Mojo Assassin CD? When, when, when are you going to start working on that? It, it's already done. It's already done. It's, as far as my I'm, my part is concerned, <laughs> you know, it doesn't take me long. Yeah, you know, just uh, you, you give me an idea, and uh, I can you write some songs for this one too, as well. Yeah, sing your. your Half and half singing. You're going to sing some, and David's going to sing some. Is that yeah, yes. But this is, you know, this time I'm is I'm going to make it where it shows off more about playing. Yeah. You know, this the songs I have. I have five songs that show off more of our playing. You know, as as opposed to just coming out and going. You know. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. You know, it's going to be a whole lot more musical than the last one. Well, the last one's great, man. Your music video is just. Badass. Yeah, I wonder who who shot that. I don't know. I know the guy. Man, he is a fucking badass. Though. Yeah, that's that's some good stuff, man. No, I was there that night too yeah. when when it was shot, yeah. and uh, it was a lot of fun. And, and you know, Troy shot so much video, and he edited it beautifully. And it's a great little hey, uh, I, ditty. I I sent a link to that video to a to a lady friend of mine in uh, England. Actually, she's a German lady that teaches in England. Frau Blucher? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and she fell in love all over she, again. She fell in love then. You know, because of it. She liked the video really, really much. She, she's really technical. You know, she's, she's German. 
And Germans are real technical minded, you know. I have a, a friend. Some people say anal retentive. You you could say that. You could say has, has a lot to do, do with butt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And nothing coming out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Squeak! <laughs> hey, I'm part German, so I'm, I'm self-effacing well, you myself. Know, I've, right been, now. I've been called German a, a whole lot. My father used to call me that little. Then go tell that little crowd to come to dinner, you know, <laughs> because I, I spoke German a whole lot more than I did English at, back mm-hmm. during the time. I, you know, my father didn't speak any. Wie geht's? Ich geht gut. Wie geht es Nice. We get a scene. Uh, C. <laughs> <laughs> we. Oh. Parlez-vous français? Comment oui. allez-vous? Comment allez-vous? Voulez-vous a qui poop? Oh. My wife is from France. so. Really? Yeah. My daughter speaks French fluently. Really? Cool. Yeah. So she's a model. So my, my little girls, especially my oldest one, speaks like French like This nothing. is what, that's the I time mean, to teach them when they're, yeah. when they're young. You know, while yeah. your brain is open and you don't, you yeah. know. My brain is like tired, so <laughs> it's hard for it to seep in. <laughs> well, I've, I've forgotten quite a bit since I, I don't, you know, I'm not in Europe anymore, but I keep threatening to go back. And when I do, I probably won't come back, you know. I'll just probably go there and stay. Yeah. Well, so I got a place to crash when I finally get my ass over. Bring your ass on, man. All right, man. I'll always have a place for you to stay. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm not going to forget my, my the people that I know. Yeah, it's just that I'll, I'll just. I'll well, this is gonna live forever because it's on the internet. Oh, really? Yeah. You can send this to your German girlfriend and. Please don't say girlfriend on the air. <laughs> <laughs> Friend, that's a girl. <laughs> Thinking back over your career, what do you think you've learned about yourself? That I wouldn't have been any place without God. He, he put it all in my... He gave me this talent. He gave me the people that, that, that fostered my talent. He gave me uh, the will to keep on when people, you know, were, were really down on me. And uh, he keeps me moving forward, you know. And uh, every now and then, he lets me know how good I'm not. Damn, that hurts. <laughs> Humility. Yeah, it's, it's hard not to be humble, you know. When the, the, well, that keeps you striving to be better and to, yeah, especially yeah. better than this fifteen-year-old kid that I just taught, you know, uh, some stuff, and now he's in in Europe jamming, and I'm not. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's always someone better. Yeah, you know exactly. There's, there's, and exactly right. And you're never gonna. You, the, the only, uh, you know, Jesus said it. There's nobody good but God. And I guess I apply that to music too. I, if there's a, if God is a musician, he's a damn good bass player. Yeah, he's the only good one. I'm trying to get there, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, amen to that. <laughs> All, right, All right, let's take us out, man. Hey, thanks for being on the show. We really appreciate it. And uh, sing us a little bit too. Uh, you know, so you're used to me singing down here. I'm gonna do this. <laughs> Message that we want to relay Like Rumpel's dust and we've been sleeping for days But the soap operas haven't delayed our progress We got a song that we wrote for you A little something that we like to do Hope we play what you like to hear today Watch this. <laughs> Good night, everybody. All right. Mr. Tony Calhoun in the shed. Thanks, Thanks a lot for being here, man. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you.